So this is Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1, a story-driven game where we play the young Sherlock Holmes and have to do all kinds of clever evidence-related tricks to solve cases. So let's tax those little grey cells and... what? What? So this is by Frogwares, and thanks to them for giving me an early go with this, in time for release on the 16th of November. And to give you an immediate taste of how solving a case goes, we've jumped a few minutes into the game to join sexy Sherlock and his close friend John, in a hotel where they're spending the night together before visiting his mother's grave in the morning. So we just need to go over here. We can run if we want. Sherry, I'm over here with my new Ursine companion. Alright. Cordona's even quieter than I remembered. It's going to be a long evening. Ah, oh, come now, Sherry. What say we amuse ourselves with a little game? What were you thinking? Oh, promise me it isn't nonsense. After being cooped up on that boat, I am itching for activity. You dirty oh, dog. As you can see, someone left a cane on our table. I simply thought you could identify its owner. Ah, so it is nonsense. It'll take me a minute, John, at most. Well then, you can deliver it to him as well. Deliver it to him? <laughs> then what are the staff here for? Aesthetics? Oh, stubborn, Sherry. Too stubborn. You wanted something to do. Slapping oneself in the face is also something to do. That doesn't make it worthwhile. But all right. Let me take a look. Right, so this is like a, a bit where we're just like um, learning how to how to do with this. We need to investigate. The cane is made of ebony. It's worn uncared for and bears the scars of numerous hits. What else is important? A crest depicting a bulb of garlic in a meadow. Perhaps the Fielding family or meadows. Or Craven from the old English name meaning garlic place. The hand grip is a head of a golden Javanese statue, probably stolen from a temple. The dents suggest it has been used as a bludgeon. <gasps> this cane is an expensive and ostentatious weapon. Its owner must be vain, volatile, and of noble English blood. Take it with you, Sherry. Let's return it to its owner. All right. All right. I hope you noted down your observations in your casebook. But how are you going to find this nobleman? The cane itself is not enough. I may have to ask other guests if they saw who was here. No, that seems straightforward. Okay, um, I think uh, one of the people we have to talk to might be this person right here. So first we need to go into the case book and we need to choose the, um, a table to spend the evening. Um, hmm, meeting the medium, we don't want to do that. Um, nothing else to worry about there. So what we're going to do is select this and pin this evidence. So it's now turned red. So we, when we ask this person now, we're going to ask about the cane rather than just nothing at all. Could you help me? That's a question I can answer. There were three people at the table, a couple and a retired Navy officer. Uh, observers weren't sure what happened to the couple, but the Navy officer was seen going out to the front garden. Well, even with your keen senses, Sherry, I doubt you'll find the cane's owner on your first try. <laughs> and would you be confident enough to bet on it, my friend? Why not? Let's see how good you really are. So now we press Q. See if there's anything... Now we can actually see... Um, a little bit of extra um, observation about people. But I think we just need to go outside, really, so... We don't need to worry about these people. Most of these people know nothing. So we don't need to worry about them. So we need to go outside. Get rid of that tutorial stuff. Oh, Sherlock. Sexy Sherlock. No, keep away from the maids. Right, so we're back out in the front garden. Right. What did we find out? Swedish physician. Secret society member. No, that's nothing to do with anything. English noble, coffee addict, Turkish judge, sympathetic. What about you? Welsh judge, a retired military office. Sir, here we go. Are you able to help me? My dear fellow, you're talking to the right man. The navy officer was sitting at our table with a noble couple. The men talked about yachting and the lady was fidgeting with her cane. Perhaps she put it aside and her husband forgot to take it when they went to meet the medium. Now I have the perfect excuse to enter the seance. Hey, Sherry, don't we now have the perfect excuse to visit the seance? I'm just going to give the cane to its owner. You will not persuade me to take part in this show. All right. I can give the cane back to its owner, so we need to go into the seance. Fair enough. Now the seance was right next to the staircase, I seem to remember. I mean, we can talk to people, but why would you do that? Are you able to help me? 
I can't help you with that, sir. See? <laughs> right, to the seance! You can tell because of the crystal ball. This hotel, this island, it's full of thieves! First my cane, now the diamond. Take your hands off me! Do you even know who I am? Hey boy! That's my cane! I get that a lot, it's a very common design. What? No, that's a custom made! A joke. A joke. It was left at my table in the restaurant. I thought it deserved to be returned. Well, I'll be... It is rare to encounter a straight-fingered true penny these days. What a gentleman. But I must ask, how did you know I was the rightful owner? Right, here we go. Time to look at him. Look at that! Look at his hands. Recently hit someone with force. What, what about you? A head of garlic? Ah, the garlic motif. Doesn't wear a, a wedding ring. Hmm. Go up you. Oh, look at that. Rich and fashionable. Hmm. And look at your conk. Swollen, reddish skin. Judging by... Oh, hang on. So we've basically got two um, two potential portraits. Um, I can be fairly certain it's Lord Craven. I mean, the habit of visiting resorts to achieve a treatment for his liver. Florid face indicates that he drinks a bit. Red knuckles taking boxing lessons. Um, already annoyed by the disappearance of his cane, he's now infuriated by the theft of a diamond. Hmm. Or similar, um, but not quite the same. Florid face indicates he has, he has a general problem with alcohol. He is still physically strong and healthy, but in a few years' time he'll be wretched. He has issues with his temper. His red knuckles reveals that he's severely beaten at least one person quite recently. Um, I'll go with that one, because it seems to be a bit more closer to what we saw already. Let's hold down space. Accept. Simple deduction. Your cane told me everything I needed to know. I was after a strong middle-aged man with a keen interest in adventure, noble blood, and affection for strong drink. And if one were to go further, one may even be able to extrapolate your name from your heraldic symbol, Lord Craven. Marvellous. Simply marvellous. That's me. Lord Andrew Craven, you are the real medium. You hear that, Emma? Well, you found my cane. Perhaps you can locate my diamond, too. Yes, you should do it. It will be child's play for you, Mr... Holmes. And if a child can do it, then I'm sure the local police can suffice. The police? Why bother? I know this Harlequin stole it. The only question is, where is it hidden? Fine. Give me my stick and I'll resolve the matter myself. This thief almost confessed after a single punch. Hmm. I suspect a beating may result in answers of questionable veracity. Fine. I shall spare you and he the trouble if you first answer me this. Tell me about the diamond. How does a priceless diamond become the subject of a seance? It is an unusual accoutrement. Emma wished to speak with its former owners. My grandfather told us it belonged to a Raja, an Indian king. So you were summoning long-dead Indian royalty, and, pray tell, you were expecting him to converse in English? To be frank, Mr. Holmes, I don't believe in ghosts. But Emma was fascinated by the idea of meeting a real king, even a dead one. Well, a crown is a crown. Can you describe the stone itself? A yellow diamond, not less than a hundred carats, and perfectly egg-shaped. There is not another like it. What happened at the seance? You insist the medium robbed you during the seance. But what occurred exactly? Ah! It was a dirty trick. We were sitting here in the dark, chanting and holding hands, as expected. Then something began to appear from the medium, like a, a cloud or a bubble. The swindler called it ectoplasm. Ah, yes. Common in the spiritualist trade, and quite the spectacle. Indeed. Perhaps too much. My beloved Emma screamed in horror, and I stood to defend her, attacking that cursed ghost. How brave. But my hand hit nothing. The medium jumped away from me, and Emma fainted. I lit the candle, and the diamond was gone. Right. Stay here, and don't touch anything. I'm going to investigate further. 
Don't fret, I'll be keeping a close eye on this thief. Right. So you now we, we need to press Z. And we have all these yellow dots around the place. Look, a skull. Quite a display for the tremulous visitor. How can you not love this stuff, Sherry? It adds so much atmosphere to the room. Was this covered on purpose? Of course. It is very dangerous to leave a mirror exposed during a seance. The spirits may become enraged. Or someone may notice the trick they should not see. Hmm. Talk to you. Pale skin, quickened pulse, unsteady breathing. She's barely conscious. The feebleness of women. Really, Sherry? Poor thing. <laughs> All right. Right, you. Oh, John. What happened here? I don't know. The ghost. I summoned it as usual, but then it all went wrong. The lady screamed and pointed at Lord Craven. And there was a shadow. Such a mystical force. It terrified the lady. And it must have taken the diamond. Who else could have? I will investigate, and the culprit will be identified. But the stubborn brute Lord Craven blames me right now. As if I could do something like that. Perhaps you can reason with him. Please? <laughs> about you? This hefty chair has nearly broken after hitting the wall. Could one man even lift it? At Cambridge, I was captain of the rugby team. It was no place for weaklings. Right, is there anything else? It's just double Z. Right, something over here. Right, hang on, let's have a look at... I think if you press Q there. Oval groove, 1.3 inch diameter. The diamond was placed on the table so that all participants could reach it. Ooh, okay. Right, you. This must be the ectoplasm. Too bad there's not enough for a proper chemical analysis. Ectoplasm? The ghost was here, Sherry. This brooch is old and cheap, but the moth design has its charms. Hmm. Okay, that was on a that was on a coat. Oh, hang on. Half a glass of Balblair scotch and the remains of a poor Laranaga cigar. What else does a gentleman need? There are light traces of rouge on the edge of this wine glass. Ah, seems like you're ready to delve into your mind palace, Sherry. I'm sure you'll make some good deductions. Right, here we go. Let's have a look. Mind palace. Go to the past. We've got clues. Now I've got to link clues now. The lady pointed across the table. Lord Craven punched the medium. Mothpin. Lady Craven faced the window. Well, the Lady Craven. Let's, let's join these two up. Aha! The courtyard witness. Lady Craven was pointing at the window. I'm sorry she saw, saw someone in the courtyard during the seance. Well, well, well. So, someone in the courtyard. And those red, um, red things indicate that this is going to be important, so let's pin some evidence. It seems there may have been an unexpected visitor outside the window. Ah, oh, I hope it was the ghost of the Raja. Mm. Thank you for helping us resolve the situation, sir. No problem. Anything else around here? Don't think so. I think we've got everything probably important. Aha! Shoulder barge! Aha! Something else! Recently scratched. Aha! This looks recent. A shoe with a broken heel will surely leave scratches. All right, John. Do you think a ghost could leave this footprint? I'm reserving judgment. Use your keen eye to follow the trail. Right, here we go. So now we get to follow trails. Where are we looking at? Con oh, here we go. Scratches. Uh, there you are. Follow you. And over here, apparently. Through here. Hmm. Storage room. <gasps> Most of more. All the maids in the hotel wear this exact shoe. <gasps> Size four with a broken heel. So, definitely not the ghost of a Raja. Unless... No, what a shame. Our witness was a nosy maid. Hmm. 
Searching the entire hotel could be difficult. Perhaps the other maids can help us find her. Mmm. Perhaps they can. Right, we need a we need a maid. Oh, it's you again. Hello. Yes, sexy Sherlock is back. Maid, talk to me. Are you able to help me? Hmm. You look like an honourable man. I have some information for you. The staff said that Lucia got a scolding from the chief steward for wearing common shoes at work. She should be cleaning near the pictures upstairs now. Ooh, new entry in John's diary. How does Sherry um, always know exactly what to do to get the answer? There are so many variables. Incredible! It's almost as if Sherry has done this before. There's also more stuff as well. This is um, basically he has his own personality and he has thoughts about me. Sometimes good, sometimes bad, depending on how much I cock up. In this case, I've been doing okay because I've been doing before. I've done it before. So we need we need to go upstairs near the paintings. Can we get? Sometimes this gives us a oh hello. This can give you like a um uh, like a, a target to walk towards, but I think that's only in, in certain cases. So we need to find the paintings. There, over there. There's quite a few paintings, but this seems to be the one. <gasps> to my best student, may your music always resonate on the deepest strings of our souls. Master Anthony. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's plenty of references to like, um, other Sherlock Holmes things in here. Like, for instance, my room number is 221. But anyway. Finally, there you are. One would think a maid would be easy to find in this place. I, I, I'm sorry, sir. Do you need more towels? No, no. You are the maid who saw the ghost in the seance room, yes? How did you know? Simple. You changed shoes after breaking a heel while fleeing the scene. I'm sorry, sir, but if I may ask, who are you? I'm, I'm, I'm going to lie. I'm a novelist documenting the supernatural and those who witness it now. Should you take a starring role in the tale, I will need your name. Oh my, a book? And you want to include me? I'm Lucia, Lucia Saleta. Something went wrong during the seance, Lucia, but no one will tell me what happened. You would be a valuable interview if you were there. I was, and I saw everything with my own eyes. Describe what happened during the seance. Um, a lady and two gentlemen were sitting at a table touching their hands to something, the medium started to whisper and, and chant, and a ghost appeared. A ghost? You're confident? Hmm? It was unearthly, sir. It grew from the medium's chest, a glowing cloud or, or a bubble. I pressed closer against the window to see better. And the lady saw you? How did you? Yes. She screamed and pointed, so I hurried to escape, and I broke my heel. But I did see the ghost. A sickly, evil thing. And that's all you can tell me? Did you see any of what happened next? <laughs> the, the medium, Mr. Galici. He was doing something with the ghost. He grabbed at it like he was trying to catch it. <laughs> and then I ran. I suppose I should be grateful you endured these horrors for such a long time. All right, I have your account memorized. Good day. You lied to the poor girl, Sherry. What a tease. She'll dream about being a character of that book. Surely a pleasant dream is better than no dream at all, John. Oh, let's get back to the crime scene. I always love seeing you explain simple things to simpletons. Oh, just kiss. Right. Okay, so I just quickly change to you. I should go back to the seance room and reconstruct events. So, look, now, now we actually have a kind of glowing thing to indicate that we need to go down there. Fair enough. Right, onwards to the stairs. To the stairs area. Etc, <laughs> etc. Et Come on, lads. Let's go. Lady Craven retired to her room to rest. Lord Craven remained here until the staff reported that the medium was locked in his room. Right. I love the ambiance. Nice and creepy. I'll just skip that. Here we go. Now here's our reconstruction. Which we have to do ourselves, because we're clever. Right, so essentially we've got to j um, decide who was sitting where, so we can reconstruct everything. So, there's the, um, there's the maid out in the window. There's the broken chair over there somewhere. So we'll start with... 
Well, no, you, you weren't sitting there, were you? So let's change that to you. What the hell's that? No, see, the, oh, that's the medium, I think. Aha! The gasping woman pointing at the pointing at the window. Oh, hang on, I've changed the wrong thing. Go back. There we go. Right. So in this node. Right. So presumably the chair was chucked over there into the corner. And when I say presumably, I already know. <laughs> And that'll be the, the remaining one. You can still actually choose the wrong one again. Like you, can, you can do the wrong, like a, <laughs> a clone fight with chairs, but let's face it, that's not what happened. Right, I think that's all set up correctly now. So validate with space. It all began when the lady screamed and pointed at the window. Lord Craven jumped up, ready to face anything, ghost or human. The medium shrank back in dismay. He was not expecting such a reaction and had to quickly hide the ghost. The lady was the only one left touching the diamond, at least until she fainted. Amazing! It's like you saw it with your own eyes, sir. Oh, I forgot that you were here. I guess I should discuss all of this with Lady Craven. The Cravens are upstairs in room 226. It is one of our finest suites. If the lady was touching a diamond, then she would have felt the ghost take it. What do you think it felt like, Sherry? A jellyfish? Actually, where am I going? <laughs> this is probably not the right way. Let's... Oh, I can't, I can't. Let's go back. Yes. Don't want to go that way this time. Let's go back. 226. I think it must be through here. Those are the sharp eyes of a man with a bright mind. Almost like mine. Whoa, what a breathtaking man. All right, all right. Keep your trousers on. Lady Craven is not who she seems. Remember her behaviour in the hall? Right, so here's some gossip. So this is another minigame sort of thing. What action by Lady Craven aroused around suspicion in the maids? We just basically need to um, um choose the things that seem appropriate and not just like random nonsense. So let's choose lots of guests this summer. I'm going to discard that because that's rubbish. Price is rising again. Rubbish. Cannot use a fish knife. Mm, that might be suspicious. Keep. The chef steals food. Who cares? Discard. Sh son's bad acquaintances. Keep that. Oh, it's rotten. Maybe not. And we ran out of time as a result of that bad choice. Okay. Let's wait for them to start Lady gossiping Craven again. Is not who she seems. Right. Let's do it this time. Let's do it properly this time. Uh, was on the lookout. Keep that. Price is rising again. No. The chef steals food. No. Made her husband drunk. Keep that. Lots of guests to summon. No. Cannot use a fish knife. Yes. Right. Good. <gasps> I heard two um, two staff members talk about Lady Craven. They gossip that the woman may not be the wife of Lord Craven. By their observation, she was on the lookout during the evening and tr while trying to get Lord Craven drunk. They also noticed that the lady was unsure how to probably use a fish knife. Nice. Right. Everything's wrapped up very nicely. Fish. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh-oh! Oh, noes! Egg! Woman! And so now it's turned into a murder! Although we did find the diamond. It's just that there's a dead woman next to it, which is unfortunate. Never mind. And so the game continues from there, and we'll continue the case, and um, everything will be really wrapped up really, very nicely indeed, and all that. So this is out, as I say, on the 16th of November, if you like uh, these sort of like clever story games and solving clues and all sorts of re CSI Miami type stuff, only without the sunglasses. <laughs> I should just stop. Um, thanks for watching. Just do subscribe to Randomized User to be notified when new stuff goes live about all the latest, best, and most interesting indie games out there. Check me out and buy me a coffee if you want to support the channel and say thank you for the videos. Uh, bye for now.